Is it bad if your quick draw looks like this? Uh, yeah, it is. For science. <laughs> Have you ever looked down, seen your quick draw look like this and gone, hmm, I wonder if that's a problem. Yeah, sort of, but let's explore why. First of all, how does this even happen? Well, if I'm going that direction and I put the gate facing the direction I'm going and I'm climbing and I'm just moving back and forth, it has play in it. This dog bone can move up and down this carabiner. So if it's moving up and down and it gets stuck up by the top there and gets rotated, well, what happens? Three, two, one. Oh, wow. That's a weird shape. And that's lower, what broke? The dog bone? Dog bone. No, dog bones don't usually break that low. The nose tore it. That is diagonal, so I bet it's because it tore from the shape of the nose. Now it's not science unless you have a sample size of two. All right, 7.89. That's a pretty hard whipper, but we got it. Now Pete Takeda from the American Alpine Club sent us to Quick Draws to test. And the reason is he's had several accidents as he's covered where the carabiner magically just broke from the quick draw. And he was wondering if it's a particular kind of carabiner, brand, model, shape, or whatever, and he wanted me to explore that a little bit. By the way, this is super rare. Now, the fact that he's got, I think, what, two or three, even if he had 10 accidents as he was covering, over millions of times, people were clipping things. This works, this system works 99.99 something percent of the time. But I wanna make sure we're not creating gear for you here, but it is important to be afraid of the right things so you can mitigate them. Whatever carabiner you have, if you're pulling it like this, it's gonna have a problem. You can kick it with your foot, get that to be correct as you pass it, and then it's doing its job. And I think the problem stems from this D-shaped carabiner, which is supposed to align the, the force that you're putting on it along the spine, the strong side of the carabiner. If you can get something stuck on this wire gate nose and this side of the carabiner, then that could stay in that position, I think, when you fall on it. And so that's also what we explored on the drop tower. Oh, that's already welting up. I'll never do this without safety glasses now that that happened. Oh, that's not very high. 9.13. The gate flipped all the way backwards and it's kind of stuck. I've never seen the nose alone come off like this. So I was corrected. It's not science unless you have a sample size of three. Let's go put this in a slow pull test machine and see if we can get something different to happen. Let's start with the dog bone on the spine. It's one of those anti-cross-loading carabiners now. That's how they make them. You know that weird uncle is like, got your news. <laughs> We've all had one. <laughs> I'm impressed that it's still more than the eight it's rated for when cross-loaded. Nailed it. So I wonder if that's what happened on the drop tower is it slid down, got stuck down here, and that's what made the dog bone break. Let's do it one more time. So this is Black Diamond's new design. It's got the I-beam shape, and we're gonna test it again this way to see if that does the same thing. And we nailed it. So these were all wire gates that we were testing. Let's try a solid gate. So there's less of a lip at the top of a solid gate for the dog bone to get stuck on, but let's pull on that and see what happens. Whoa, the dog bone's fine. So the dog bone is not perfect, but it's definitely the winner when compared to the carabiner. Look how sharp that is. Would this make for a good thumbnail for a micro fracture video? <laughs> micro fractures aren't a myth. Now for getting 10 to 12 kilonewtons in what I'm gonna call worst case scenario, is that still super good enough? Well, is that the cause of the accidents that Pete shared with us? Maybe, I don't know, no one knows. I think we need to talk about hard catches. Now, sometimes a leader is going to be afraid to fall and they'll ask their belayer to take out all the slack in their rope so they don't fall as far. The problem is if you don't have enough rope, 
is it can actually generate more force and catch be a harder catch. In theory, if you could get six kilonewtons on you, which is putting roughly six kilonewtons on the belayer, you would be getting 12 on the quick draw that's catching you. So you don't have to take these massive whippers to get these massive forces. You can actually just be at the first bolt, your feet right at it and just, just do a hard catch right on it. You just don't have that much rope in the system and they're not giving you a nice soft hop. If you have the height to fall an extra nine inches before you get caught by the rope, maybe have your blair do that or something. These are strong enough. I don't want you to be afraid every time you take a whipper that your quick draw is going to just explode. But let's talk about something you should know. If you are going to be climbing that direction, you wanna be putting the spine in the direction you are going. Otherwise, you see how well that works? Otherwise, if you put the gate facing that way and it just lifts up just enough, in theory, it could. If it's, it, it could come off. Take my word for it. Oh, I finally got it. There you go. Just be cognizant of the orientation of your quick draws before you take off to the next one. Hopefully this broke more gear fear than it created. Thank you, Pete Takeda, for sending me those quick draws and writing articles about the accidents that happen in the American Alpine Club newsletter. You can go sign up for their emails or you can sign up for ours and learn more about climbing. And if you broke all of your quick draws from cross-loading them, you can replace those at hownotto.store. I got over 1,500 products in my store now and we ship six days a week the day that you order it. Cheers.